Okay, um, Mr. McDonald, we are up to 93 participants and I have a little bit of a breather of folks coming in. Um, it looks like there's still a few more trickling in. Do you want to get us started and kick us off? Yeah, I just say that I, I want to, you know, thank people for being here again tonight or this afternoon. Uh, you know, things are different and surprise. Um, and while we typically would be having local control and accountability plan meetings um, in the fall, uh, where we would be uh, bringing uh, people together for a stakeholder meeting, um, we now have a learning continuity and attendance plan meeting that the state um, thoughtfully gave the same acronym to, um, to help us um, kick off um, this, this year um, with the, just to, like a little bit of like, sort of like stuff that you probably don't care about with the uh, COVID-19, with the um, resulting impact on the economy, um, a lot of things have changed. And so what the state did is they took our local control and accountability plan, our LCAP, and they sort of put that in timeout. And as the, when the budget was passed, they put, um, they put this in its place. And so um, um, I'm Roger McDonald, I'm your superintendent. Uh, Susie McRae um, is um, the woman of many hats. She's technically our data systems and programs administrator, which I think is close to her title, but really her title is um, the soft side of technology. Um, you may have met Tim Oliveira um, out there. He's our director of technology. So he's the hard side of technology. He's the hardware and the hard part of it. And Susie's the more working with our staff on how to use it. Um, and Susie, one of her jobs is working on, um, on our school plans, district plans. And so she's really um, hosting this meeting. Um, I, I wanna let you know what's different about this. For those of you that have gone to LCAT meetings, either in our district or in the associate schools, if you're incoming ninth graders, those meetings were um, different in that there was more shared out. There was more, data to look at. There was student achievement data. There was all sorts of different demographic data that we would share to give you a picture of our school district. And then we, we would ask you for feedback on how you could help us come up with a plan. Um, that's not really what this is. This one's a little bit different. And Susie will fine tune the explanation, but um, this one is slightly different in that we're not sharing that much data with you. We are um, sharing with you a little bit about what we expect to be doing this year. Um, before we share any of what we're doing this year, I want you to know that at every board meeting, we're taking a time out to reevaluate how we are. We expect every month or so to fine tune our plan. So as you're hearing things say that may or may not make sense, know that if we get off into the year and some of our ideas aren't working for everybody, we're completely open to um, fine tuning them. I mean, that's for our teachers that are listening um, as well as for our community that's listening. So um, before I take us down a parallel, but not exactly the road that Susie would like to have us on to get this done, I'll turn this back over to Susie McRae. Thank you very much. So um, the learning continuity plan, before we get into the details of that, I just wanted to welcome you all here. We had a little last minute um, change with our platform. Obviously you found us in Zoom and Tim kindly redirected you to uh, the Google Meet and that I just want to make it clear right off the bat at the bottom of your screen you can roll down and turn on captions if that is helpful to you that's an option in Google Meet. Um, so what I'd like to do is for us to just get an idea for those of you that have the option in, in, um, in Google Meet in the upper left hand corner there is a thumb or um, a th actually it is a thumb and if you roll over that you can see a bunch of icons if you're on a phone i'm not sure that it's going to be working but i i kind of wanted to try this to see if it would work with this group can you uh put up a thumb um or one of those icons if and i'm going to run through all of the school sites so we kind of want to get an idea of how how many folks are here from each of the sites just so that we know who's in the room and you do too so Arcata High related um, students, parents, or staff, can you put a thumb up if you're Arcata High? And you should be um, on your screen. You can see a bunch of folks popping in that they're related to Arcata High. Awesome. And this is one of the things that we're doing here tonight. I see your thumb up in the window, Noah, Noah Levy. That's awesome. 
um, is, is giving you a chance as parents for the parents that are out there to see what your students have been up to on these meets. How about McKinleyville High? Do I have a thumbs up for the McKinleyville High folks? Students, families, staff? You can see some folks popping in. Do I have some Six Rivers Charter High School families? Or staff, students? Right. Yes. Families, so I don't know how to do Awesome. Thanks, Jennifer. Um, what about Pacific Coast High School? And Mad River High School. Awesome. Thanks, Karen and Shanna. That's super. Okay. Um, and then this last one for my own curiosity uh, for stakeholder groups. Um, if you are, are a parent, Raise your hand or put your thumb up if you're a parent. And I'll put my thumb up in that one as well. Awesome. And Jennifer, I see your hand up in the video. That's great. Um, and if you are a student, do we have any students in the room? Oh, I was hoping we would have some students tonight. I know that's a lot to ask. Staff, can I see a show of thumbs? Who, where are my staff? Excellent. Good to see you all out there. All right, a um, couple things with the meetings that we have. Um, what we're going to do is gather feedback tonight in this meeting. That's the purpose of the stakeholder meeting. Um, the learning continuity and attendance plan is a little bit different, like Roger said, than the LCAP plan. So what the state has done is they've taken the LCAP plan off the table for us this year. We do not need to, uh, to do that. And if your microphone is on, can you please mute yourself? I have somebody, um, Madri Uckland, it looks like, making a, um, your microphone is not muted. Um, and then also the other thing, since we do have 102 people in the room, um, if you're not speaking, if you don't mind um, um, taking your video off, it's gonna help with the bandwidth, so my technology folks tell me. And then um, I'm gonna jump down to norms and go back to the learning continuity plan. So if you have questions, we're asking to not use the chat tonight. It can be very distracting for not only us as presenters, but you as participants. If you have questions, if you could uh, email Tammy um, at tpeers.nohum.org, she's gonna be monitoring that as if it is a chat. Um, and I'm gonna type that really quick in the chat um, so that you can get access to that re really easily by just copying and pasting. Um, and I'm having a hard time. Actually, Tim, can you type Tammy's uh, address in there for me? Thanks. Um, and then we'll have you turn your videos back on when you talk. The uh, tech access for Tim, I know that we talked about the turning captions. Tim, did you have anything else for tech access on this meeting? Nope, that was it. <laughs> Thank you, Tim. I appreciate all your support. Kind of got crazy there at the end. You're a rock star. Um, and please note, folks, this meeting is being recorded and it will be distributed to people who request it, just like we do our board meetings. So back to the learning continuity and attendance plan. This is a plan that um, we've been required to write as a public school in the state of California, and it's been our opening plan for distance learning. Um, there's a variety of questions that we need to answer, and we need to get stakeholder feedback in that. A draft of that plan will be going to the board at our September 8th meeting, and then they will have an additional board meeting on September 22nd to approve the plan. The plan includes many things that um, more than what's going to be covered tonight. What we really want to find out from you is um, information that I know is on the forefront of your minds as well as our minds to hear how you're doing and kind of take a pulse in the community. Um, so moving on. Um, the first thing that we would like to find out from you is um, some information about communication. We have had an upgrade to our Synergy system, which is our student information system. 
Um, and parent view and student view has a few more features on it. So we will definitely be using that this year even more so for communication. And one of the things that you're gonna see in there is we're gonna have different attendance codes. So in the past, you've seen if a student is tardy or if they're absent through student view or parent view, you're gonna see some new attendance codes specific to distance learning. So what the state of California is asking us to do is keep track if students are actually participating by counting the amount of time that they're working on assignments and, and, um, and then translating that into if it's participating or not participating as far as distance learning goes. So if you see a DL in parent view, that means your student was participating. A DN is they were not participating or what you will probably see from the get-go are DPs, it's pending. There may be times that your student has an assignment that um, spans maybe a week or two weeks. So the teacher can't determine if they were participating during that time um, completely, so it will be a pending. So it's something that is going to be turned in. And teachers won't necessarily be teaching, taking attendance every day. It will be more um, on a weekly basis. Um, the other thing that we have done with communication this year to try to improve that specifically for our distance and COVID world is we are now available on Facebook. You can find us if you search for Northern Humboldt Union High School District, the full name. You will know that you found us if you see the district logo, which is that blue and white logo with the picture of uh, Trinidad head in it. We are also found at Instagram now. It's NHUHSD, which is the acronym, acronym of Northern Humboldt Union High School District. I encourage you to follow us and we will be pushing out information um, through there. And I see my phone is pleasantly blowing up with people following us on Instagram. So thank you for that. It's happening as we speak. That's awesome. Love it. Okay, so um, moving forward, I am hoping that you can tell us what is the best way to communicate with you? So this is a tool that your students will be likely using in their classroom. It's called Slido. And the way to use this, there's two different things you can do. If you have a phone, you can take a picture of that funny looking, um, it's called a QR code. If, and take your camera and put it up to it, and it's gonna take you right to the web page. Or you can go to slido.com and it'll ask you for a number, which is, four, five, five, five. And it's gonna ask you what is the best way to communicate with you. And this is an online poll that you can take. It's giving us information um, back to know the best way to communicate with you. I'm gonna give a couple minutes to let folks participate in the Slido poll. Students and our, uh, the staff that are present too, please participate in this. While folks are participating in this, um, you may ask why we haven't used texting in the past. And I see texting is right up there with email. It is a, um, according to the, and I'm gonna get the acronym wrong. It's the federal government that won't allow us to text to you unless you give permission first. This is something we can do. It's just been cumbersome to put in place. And we are trying to figure out now how, um, how much we should pursue that. If you're wanting us to text to you, then that's what we are gonna pursue the ability to do that. Wait a few more minutes. It looks like nobody's really all that interested in Facebook or Instagram. I have 64 participants in the Slido and 106 folks in my meeting, so I'm just gonna wait a couple more seconds here to let folks participate. It tells me right up here how many have. Okay. So as you're getting in and figuring that out, um, you can still participate in this. We are, uh, like I said, we're recording this and all the information off of uh, the Slido, we can, we can get at a later time. I'm gonna stop now for questions um, and Tammy's gonna feed those to me here in just a minute, but I see Camila Barrett is using the hand up feature. Camila, did you have something to say? Feel free to unmute yourself. 
Thank you. Um, I just wanted to say, uh, I believe someone named Greg mentioned, depends on what the message is. Is it short and concise than text? Um, and I would have to agree something I appreciate at my children's school is that they will text me a very short message that will just say, check your email. And it alerts me to check my personal email that there's a lengthy something from them. But you know, it, it comes to me right away as just a really quick text. And I like that. Awesome, Camila, thank you. Um, and then um, do you have questions, Tammy, that are coming in on the email? As we should be using the email, not the chat? No. It's not there are none. There are none, okay. Okay, um, the next section that we're going to go to here is I'm going to pass the baton over to Mr. McDonald to talk about this section. And and uh, thank you for that. That was so that was a handy piece of feedback. And so I appreciate all of you being here. Um, and then uh, Camila and pretty much everyone that agreed. Thanks for that. Um, not going too deep into this, I know we've emailed this out and I know that your school sites are also talking to you about the distance learning schedule, but just to sort of give it a quick, you know, um, run through, we acknowledge um, that you cannot take um, the really high quality uh, classroom instruction and just jam it through the internet and hope that it's going to come out um, on the other end in the same place for students. Um, we understand how many different variables that there are. There's the um, there's the learning style and teaching style of the teacher. There's the subject matter. Um, there's the complexity of the content. There's also uh, the situation at home, like how much room is there in the house? How much um, bandwidth is there in the home for the whole family to be using the internet, um, for instance? Um, we all, Zoom fatigue is like a real thing. And I know I talked to a couple of parents, they're like, well, you're seriously gonna make my child spend 90 minutes staring at a computer? I mean, absolutely. Um, I just saw Diana Howard pop on and she would strangle me if I was expecting people to do that. Um, there's a rule for that. And um, anyway, there's, um, and practice to stay healthy and safe. So what we came up with is we came up with a schedule that would allow um, teachers the ability to have a bunch of time to work with their students and not just um, work through the content, but also try and provide some time to have some you know, FaceTime for students with students and for um, teachers with students to, to create an opportunity um, to have some direct instruction and to have a variety of other instructional um, strategies deployed for student use, but also allow our students the opportunity to interact with each other and to just have time to do some schoolwork and then ask a question while they're doing that. And so um, in addition to this schedule that I'm showing you, you know, we have order in for more student devices. We're um, equipping our teachers with with better devices to acknowledge the fact that they need that technology at home. Um, we're trying to um, make sure that they have the technology that they need um, to do the best job they can for you. We also want to acknowledge that there's only so much that a child can take and only so much that a teacher can provide. And so as we look at um, our uh, our distance learning plan, as we're starting the year off, in distance learning as, as, as that's our uh, first objective is to is to do a good job with the distance learning schedule and to do a good job with all of us adults that are going to be on campus doing a good job of being on campus safely so that we can practice that and then we can develop our protocols um, and if the health conditions improve in our county when they do we can slowly bring people back but we can do that within a context of us being here safely getting ready for you so um, we're being deliberate we're being patient um, but we're, we are putting a lot of work into providing this for you. So taking a look at the schedule in front of you, you'll see that um, on Mondays and Tuesdays and Thursdays and Fridays, your students will have three blocks um, in which they will um, have 90 minutes of instruction. They also are gonna have a, a daily check-in. Um, those first 15 minutes, each of those four days gives them an opportunity uh, for maybe a teacher to give some announcements or just an opportunity just to check in. How are things going? You know, how was the weekend? Um, you know, what's, what's new, you know, just get some, have a teacher have a relaxed opportunity to get some, you know, eye to eye, you know, face to face contact with the kids in the class. 
and then moving into those three blocks of 90 uh, periods each. You'll see on Wednesday, Wednesday looks different. On Wednesdays, um, we are giving um, students the opportunity to, um, to get some work done. We're giving them an opportunity to check in with their teachers. Um, it's, it's an independent student work time, and there are um, there is some time for uh, uh, teachers to open up their schedule um, in sort of like a study hall situation. Also, um, on those Wednesdays, we will be doing um, faculty meetings and staff meetings. Um, teachers will have an opportunity to collaborate with each other, um, as well as um, the students will have an opportunity to collaborate with each other. So Wednesdays are going to also be an opportunity um, to uh, to really have our student services counseling team um, push out for uh, meeting um, with with uh, students. Um, Obviously, if a student is in need throughout the, the day, if it's not a Wednesday, um, there'll be an opportunity for them to connect with their counselor to get the time um, with them. Some things are going to sort of roughly translate to what school would look like. We don't know what our passes are going to look like right now, but it's certainly likely that in the middle of a block, a student may need to go to see their counselor or have to go see the principal or something like that. You know, there'll be um, things that will that will happen during that time. And so we'll work out our communication with each other. But we're really trying to, to find a lot of that um, stuff on Wednesdays. Um, another um, thing that will happen is zero period for our orchestra kids. Um, the zero period, instead of having it be really early in the morning, will be during that Wednesday time. So um, th that's when they'll have their time um, to do their zero period work. We um, we also have uh, unbelievable. I just lost my space. Um, but the, the piece that I wanted to uh, mention during this was something that I'm just going to have to gosh darn it get back to you later on. But this oh it was the six o'clock on Wednesday uh, on Wednesdays, and so this is something that like especially for our teachers are like wait a minute, what's this? The reason that we are um, inviting or asking um, our teachers to um, give information to, to give the weekly like at a glance like this is what you can expect next week on a Wednesday is to give our students um, an opportunity to get their work schedule and actually have a weekend to sort of work on that if they want. They're not really assigned work, um, but they'll have an opportunity to do that over the weekend. They'll have an opportunity to come back from the weekend and, and, and have that time to prepare to hand in their major assignments, um, you know, by Tuesday afternoon. The many of your teachers are going to be putting um, uh, their week at a glance out earlier than 6 p.m. We just put that as a, you know, as a deadline. Um, we don't have an expectation that our teachers are working until six on something like this. We just know that, you know, many of our professional educators do work into the night. They're grading papers, they're lesson planning. So you'll either get, you'll get that sometime before six. It very well could come up in the morning on a Wednesday. But that's a communication piece and just a way for our students and our staff to plan for the week ahead. Um, so that is our, uh, our schedule, you'll notice if you add the minutes up, these minutes don't add up to a typical workday. They don't, um, but these minutes do exceed um, the amount of time that the state expected us to be in school. So we, uh, they gave us a minimum requirement and we, um, we upped that um, by a little bit because you know we believe it's, it's best for our kids and our teachers because who really wanna get through their curriculum. Your teachers um, coming into the beginning of the year are now faced with a challenge though of during the um, distance learning time, they're just not gonna be able to get to everything. And while it's true that they have already several times taken a look at their curriculum and went for essential standards and sort of winnowed down the curriculum they're gonna teach, they're gonna be de needing to do that a little more while we're in distance learning. Um, I would say um, it's it's a, a mile, you know, instead of being uh, a mile wide, we're a mile, a mile wide and inch deep or a mile deep and an inch wide. We really want um, to make sure that as our students are progressing, they're getting the absolute essential um, framework standards experience that they need um, to move forward. So that is, um, I emailed this um, to all of you. Some of you, um, we, we may not have your emails correct yet. And so we're continuing to work on that. If you're not getting emails from me um, or if you did not get an auto dialer from me, asking you to give us our email address if you didn't get an email please do contact your site and get your um, your uh, numbers in there and then you'll be um, getting those emails the sites are sending stuff out almost every day and i've been sending stuff out fairly regularly as well so that is the um maybe go to the next slide 
Actually, Roger, can I stop you here? We have quite a few emails coming in. Oh, um, absolutely. And then also, uh, before I get going on that, um, the principals, I know you're all on here. Did I mess up the afternoon on Wednesday? Um, I'm hearing through my chat that it should be 1 to 3, not 1.30 to 3. If I could get a principal to uh, confirm my, my potential typo there, I would love that. Um, meantime, Roger, uh, I'll throw one at you here. Um, there's a question about the hands-on classes. Good. How how are those going to be addressed? Like wood shop and auto shop. Yeah. So I so early on, I sent a uh, communication out. <clears throat> Excuse me. In uh, it was like late June, early July, and at that time, when we were when we were planning for the beginning of the year. Um, we very much um, were hoping, well, first of all, we were hoping that we could just open up. Um, and then as conditions continue to um, decline, I'll put it physically, um, even by the end of July, um, I was still hopeful that we could start the year with our alternative ed and some of our hands-on CTE classes open. Um, we are going to be um, spending the first couple of weeks just doing distance learning. We're going to be checking um, data in the state, testing capacity in the state. We're going to be fine tuning our protocols um, on campus for um, you know moving around, uh, you know for safety, for cleanliness, and, and all of that. And as we um, move into the uh, to that September to that first board meeting, we'll be starting having conversations about what can we bring back first. Um, if we can get some more positive direction, we just had eleven positive tests. Test, not tests, tests come in um, over the weekend. And so it's it's not, it hasn't turned around to a direction that we really want to see yet. But um, we anticipate um, that the early classes that would come back to some sort of physical, you know, even if it's real small groups or just one on one would be our alternative ed sites where students have demonstrated that the, um, have already demonstrated that the, um, that, that school isn't like a great fit for their academic success. And now they also have the alternative ed experience with the COVID experience. And so those will be among our first uh, groups that get an opportunity to come back a little bit at a time. Our CTE classes, whether it's um, wood shop or whether it's our, our, we have over, I can see from my office, our tiny homes project over here at McKinleyville High, um, our culinary or any of the other classes that we have that are CTE. Um, as we get our teachers back, and if, like I said, once we can start seeing the health conditions improving, we can work with our um, CTE staff who are chomping at the bit to have some physical interaction with their kids to find a way to slowly, safely make that happen. Um, so the time frame for that is, I don't know, a couple, three weeks after school starts, those conversations engaging. But I have to tell you, the forecast that I have to see um, some changes in our in our health um, you know, reporting here in the county first. Um, so I don't know if that answered that question. It's it's not happening right now. It, it will be something we'll be looking like that right after school starts. Um, but I, like I say, I need to see um, health conditions improve and we need to practice w what that would look like on campus and work with our CTE people to make that happen. All right, thank you, Roger. Ron, I believe that you might have an answer for me on my time. Your hands raised, Ron Perry. It's okay with the time. Sometimes it's so hard to un unplug. Um, one, the, the, the one that I looked at from Joanne said one to three, but um, Nick wrote in one thirty to three. So I, now I'm really confused. Um, so the one that I sent out, the one that went to all the parents, that the title of it is final, says one to three. Oh, it so. says. It says one to three. Um, my my, I just wanted to make one simple clarification for the Six Rivers parents out there. Um, the Monday and Thursday schedule, because we actually have seven periods in the day, will be slightly different. I'm conferring with staff to make sure it fits our vision and our goals. And so um, Six Rivers blocks on Monday and Thursday will be slightly different than um, the ABC that is portrayed in the schedule that's on the screen. Okay, um, Roger, are you ready for another question? I am ready for another question. Okay, and I'm gonna I'm gonna throw this one out too. There's I'm gonna combine some Wednesday questions. There's the question: 
If it's mandatory, will people be accepting appointments and how do we communicate absences? And I'll tell you that communicating the absences, you would communicate with your teacher. The student um, could say, you know, tell the teacher that they're gonna be absent on that particular day um, or through the office, either way works. And then Roger, if you wanna take the Wednesday being mandatory and people taking appointments. So we had originally said, so to be honest with you, I think that one is something that's going to work itself out over the next couple of weeks as far as appointments. We do not want to limit the access for students by saying you have to have an appointment because that could mean that there's only, because that could limit it to just that one student at a time when you could have other students actually in the classroom working together and they wouldn't be able to if there's an appointment. So I think that's one of those things that we'll work out with our staff. Um, I know that there are some staff that are interested in making appointments for that Wednesday time. Um, I think that's something that we'll work on together and communicate that out over the next couple of weeks um, as we learn how to use our technology with Zoom and breakout rooms and try and imagine what it would look like with the technology for um, a group of kids to be in a classroom and then a student walk over and talk to a teacher privately. So we just need to work through all of that. Um, I can see the logic for having appointments. I also just wanna make sure um, that that happens within the context of allowing other students to get in there and engage and have that interaction with each other, like work together, for instance. Awesome. Um, the question about zero period, yes, they would need to meet both the morning and the afternoon session for zero period. I believe so, yes. And if you have zero period, that will be communicated out to you um, by your teacher. More information awesome. to follow. Um, a question, um, this one's for Tim, if you don't mind me lobbing over that way. Not at uh, all. Tim, there's a twofer here. A tablet, such as an iPad, will that be sufficient? And then I have another question for you after you ask, answer that one. Um, would it be sufficient? Um, if you have an external keyboard, I would say yes. Um, if not, it will be challenging, and I'd recommend either investing in a keyboard or or reaching out to us for a Chromebook. So I guess the answer to that is yes with an asterisk. Okay, and then will there be an alternative site available if the student doesn't have Wi-Fi? Are both all, all of our campuses are outfitted with external access points now, so you could come and park in the parking lot. Other than that, um, we don't really have anything that's through us per se, but there are internet cafes and things and resources available in the community. And I, and I can generate a list of those um, and post that. Okay. Um, and then um, they want to know, and this might be a question more for the principals, how do they know which books to pick up? Which textbooks? If uh, I can... Sure, Ron, you can answer that. But I mean, I would say one thing is that communication is coming home on that for kids. But go ahead, Ron. Yeah. As I sent this home in an email last night, and I believe this came out from Ms. Baruby. Ms. Baruby is asking at Arcata High School, and I, I think that this probably is true in McKinleyville as well, that students pick up their schedules. Arcata students will pick up theirs uh, to, at the time before they pick up their books from the Arcata High School office. Six Rivers students can pick up their schedules tom starting tomorrow. Um, and at the Six Rivers office, room 703, and then taking their schedule over to uh, the librarian. The librarian is a list of books that go out for each class. And so if a student is not required to have a book for a class, they're not going to get a book for a class. But um, teachers have requested that the librarians make books available um, during the course of this week. And um, that um, Mr. Manji and I have both emailed both that information out to parents previously. Awesome. Mr. Can I, before you ask the next question, I know that there's, um, I'm actually getting communication from people that I know as well as what I'm seeing on here. Maybe just say for this one, I know that we wanted to do the email because the chat, the chat is um, a little distra distracting, except that I think that there's people that have to leave the presentation to send an email, and then they can't see the presentation because they're going back and forth mm -hmm. on a smaller device. So it might be that if you've already sent an email question, that's great. If not, perhaps, Amy, you can just, um, you know, check the uh, check the chat for specific questions. You can just direct them to Tammy, and that might do the same thing. It's just it's just hard for us to do two things at once, which is like look at the chat and look at the uh, presentation. So anyway, so thought. Sorry for the interruptions, Susan. 
Nope, you're all good. So with that being said, folks, appreciate all the emails, but let's have Tammy check one place and let's put it in the chat now so it's easier for everybody. Um, that way, Tammy, you don't have to check both places because that gets super crazy for you, I know. Um, Roger, if it's okay with you, I'll move to the next slide and that will answer quite a few of the questions that have popped up. Yeah. So yeah, and so this is, you know, like I was saying, we're, we're not going to jam 90 minutes of Zoom time and, and have our teachers zombie out for 90 minutes speaking and your students have to sit there and stare at the computer. Um, we expect that, uh, class, you know, a typical class, we're not mandating that this is, this is not a mandate. This is a, this would be a good amount of time to get stuff done. Your teachers are fabulous. Your teachers, our teachers are very different in their instruction and they're going to be creative. Uh, many of them have spent their summer planning. Um, we're going to continue with professional development through the year for them, but you can expect something like this, some live class interaction, some um, explanation of assignment, some time for them to work together. Uh, we're going to be using Zoom and we're going to be using um, uh, our, our Zynergy, our Synergy uh, learning management system, as well as some Google Classroom. So your kids are going to have different experiences, but you can expect in some cases that the teacher will put them in groups and their teacher will like in cyberspace bounce back and forth between them. For instance, um, we, uh, it's going, the point is we're going to have a varied, um, varied instructional strategies and every period that your child is in, they should ex expect to, you know, have different experiences while they're in there. Uh, so there's that. Um, again, you know, uh, the 6 p.m. on Wednesday, posting assignments for the upcoming student work week. I want to clarify one thing. That doesn't mean that every assignment needs to be turned in um, at two for the, you know, the previous five school days. It means that any assignment that's going to require a lot of work outside of the classroom, those assignments are the ones um, that will be get, that have to be turned in by then. I mean, there's teachers are going to be doing things every day. They're going to be doing formative assessments. They're going to be doing things every day to to see what their students know in real time so they can plan for the next day. So there's going to be quizzes and little assignments and stuff like that, you know, every day, probably. But just saying like the major assignments would be due on the Tuesday. Um, again, um, we talk about Wednesdays there and um, and, and just knowing that, you know, I know that many of our teachers are excited to, we as an organization are excited to have a much better experience for all of our souls and all of our, you know, all of our human being on this planet spirit stuff. We need to have a better experience than we had last year, just like you need to have a better experience than we had last year. Um, so your students can expect um, by the middle of February, if they want to be in a club, to have clubs happening. Um, your librarians are all over it. Like, you know, we are here and we want to lead and we want to support. Um, so they definitely um, are, are pushing out to, to, to be part of um, your kids' experience. Um, go ahead, Sue, to the next slide. And, and certainly your um, academic counselors and your um, student assistance team um, want to be there for your child. They they want to be there um, to help them with their academic planning, and they want to be there to help them with just coping. Um, we know how important we are as an organization. Um, we know how powerful um, our student services team is and our counselors are, and we want to provide that access for you and for your kids. And so um, one thing I'm going to put out there too, before you answer this question about what you might need to be successful with the schedule, is that we're planning on, um, like today we talked about it with our principals, you know, we're planning on doing um, like evening presentations, like similar to a town hall, but a little more effective, like a recorded presentation on different themes, technology, on um, on um, the, the, the pedagogy, the, the educational experience that your kids are going to have, the schedule. We're going to be doing like little videos with a followed up optional question and answer session that you can attend live. Um, for you already. So we know that we're going to, um, we're going to make sure that we um, get out to them. And I'd see like, I'm just doing what I shouldn't do. I just glanced at the, um, um, at the chat and yeah. And for our students, we'll definitely be um, finding ways to reach out to them and, um, and, and keep them in the loop too. Um, so that's for me right now. And then Tammy, as you go into the next slide or if you want to take questions, I mean, Susie. 
That's all right. <laughs> Let's uh, take a break and just, um, we would like to have some feedback from you. I know there's a lot of questions coming through the chat, um, but if you have some of those questions, this is the Slido that we're doing this time. And again, you can take a picture of the um, QR code or go to slido.com and put that number 4555 in. All of this is being recorded along with the chat. And so we're gonna be able to take this away from away with us um, if it's not able to be, um, you know, if, if you don't get an answer tonight, this is another way for us to get it. So I'm gonna give you a couple minutes. We have seven people that have given us some feedback about the schedule. For the person in Slido that said that they need a hotspot, please reach out to your school site and we'll get that for you. to hear folks' feedback. Okay, as Slido is slowing down, feel free to continue to add to that. We definitely are going to be using that for feedback. Um, and I'm going to move forward. Susie. Yes. Uh, there's a couple of people who have asked about Wednesdays and the zero period overlapping with the time that the students might see us during office hours. Can you address that? Yeah. And Diana, in the future, can you put your questions in the chat? I know you missed it when we talked about norms because of our Bet. snap with our meeting time. But, um, thank you very much. Diana, that's going to be a, a challenge. That's going to be one of the things as we work out. And I think what will happen is, is that um, as as we get into this, we'll fine tune it. And if that's not working, um, then we'll make a change. Is the easiest way to answer that? I know that's sort of a general fluffy answer, but um, if if because zero period right now is orchestra, and so as long and so we'll and it's not that many kids, and so we'll work with them and see what needs to happen. If we need to make an adjustment, we'll definitely make an adjustment. So, um, other other questions? So you see, I already sort of talked about Zoom. So social opportunities. I mean, school. Like, okay, and I say this as a dad. I have. Um, I mean, I have a senior at Arcade High School next year, and I have a sixth grader um, at um, at uh, Pacific Union, and they're not really having this 
you know, especially when um, they listen to me on the phone with my peers and they know that I like had a role in keeping them from being able to go to school, um, you know, this fall physically on campus. And so, and I, it's, um, I know that our children need to be with each other and see each other. Uh, there was a time earlier in the summer where we did like a drive by birthday party and my older daughter like just sort of broke down after it because she was able to drive by one of her good friend's house and be like six, eight feet away and just be in the same space outside and just look her in the eye, how much that mattered. So there's, there's, there's a lot to finding ways um, to, to make this happen. I know that our teachers, especially our freshman teachers, they're meeting um, this like super important uh, group in our, um, you know, in our district who are going to be with us for four years and they're not really getting the chance to really meet them. And so we're, um, we're encouraging people to be creative. Um, I know that there's going to be some good ideas that come out once we get our teachers back, we get more people back and we're talking about all of this. We had, we had what turned out to be a tremendous experience with our drive uh, through graduations last year, for instance. Um, it wasn't the same thing as being um, there all together, but it was cool and it was a lot cooler than people thought it would be. And so as, as the point of as an example of an idea that could come out of us being together, um, I know that we're going to be doing what we can to find some way to interact with your kids and to help them interact with each other. Um, like I said, the Zoom classes with breakout rooms, like finding ways to give kids a chance to work together while the teacher's getting some independent time with smaller groups, um, having our clubs back and, and making those work. I know that the leadership classes are already talking about stuff. You know, I get, um, I follow them on Instagram and I get stuff all the time of, of what they're trying to do. They're really trying to be real um, as leadership teachers and leadership students to really have an impact on their schools. Um, I talked briefly about um, our, uh, the social emotional supports of our student services team and our counselors, um, you know, that's, you know, that's going to be a big part of our experience. And um, just know that any good idea we're going to consider. So I don't know what all the ideas are. I know that I've been sort of trapped in my own little world of trying to make this happen from my perspective in this office, largely by myself interacting um, with people, uh, you know, online. And as we have our whole faculty coming back this week, and as our, all of our kids are coming back next week, we are going to um, have more ideas. And so um, if it's safe, we wanna do it. Um, and if it's creative, we wanna hear it. One thing I can give you a little update on um, is that Dustin Dutra, uh, athletic director, assistant principal at McKinleyville High School, um, and like over 20 year experience coaching multiple sports um, on our uh, campuses. Um, Dustin, why don't you give us a little sports update? Sure, thank you, Roger. Um, so recently, the uh, McKinleyville High School and Arcata High School, both part of the Humboldt Del Norte League, uh, Humboldt Del Norte League met and came up with a developed a calendar um, that's going to hopefully be able to offer our um, th offer three seasons of sport. And and again, this is going to be depending on uh, you know the blessing of county health and and current conditions of the time. Uh, our goal is to hopefully be able to begin athletics uh, December fourteenth. And that first season would consist of boys and girls basketball and boys and girls cross country. Uh, that would run from December 14th to February 6th. So we're talking approximately eight weeks. Uh, the second season uh, um, would consist of football, volleyball, and boys and girls soccer. And that would run from February 8th to April 10th, uh, nine weeks. And again, these, uh, these dates are not necessarily set in stone. The league still needs to get together and finalize uh, the length of time of each season. And then finally, our third season uh, would include baseball, softball, boys and girls tennis, boys and girls golf and track and field. And that season would run from April 12th to June 5th. Uh, the only uh, only sport that we're offering or that both schools would be offering that would be outside of those, uh, those dates is going to be wrestling. And wrestling is would be actually be running from March 8th to June 12th up to the end of the school year. And that is just based on uh, the fact that there are not a whole lot of opportunities local uh, to wrestle. Uh, so they would possibly need to be traveling outside the area uh, in which to find some competition. Uh, our goal again uh, is to provide 
for three seasons of sport to, to offer the full array of sports so students will have the opportunity uh, to play and not necessarily have to choose one sport over the other if it's, it's not offered in their traditional season. Um, and most of that competition is going to be restricted to local competition only. Uh, we're trying to find ways for our students to be safe, but also to be able to enjoy those extracurricular opportunities. Thank you. Thanks, Dooch. Thanks, Dustin. Um, I want to. Uh, I also want to say that this is this this meeting could have been really easily just, hey, let's ask you some questions and move on. And I know that I'm probably talking a little bit too much. Um, I haven't seen Hamilton yet, but I know I should smile more and speak less. But I want to tell you that one of the reasons why we're doing this is that we are completely committed to improving every single day. We know we don't have. Uh, the final plan here. We know that. We know that what we're doing is we're trying to do something great when it hasn't necessarily been done on this scale before. We know that. Well, um, we expect at the end of the day that with your feedback and our humility and listening to you, that we will end up with a, an excellent plan and we will completely take care of your kids. We can't do it without you. So please know that um, I'm over speaking to just really explain what's happening, what our thinking is right now. But our teachers, our students, and our parents have a tremendous amount of feedback for us that's important. So don't quit on us. Don't, don't get frustrated if this is sort of weird for you. Know that we are prepared to deliver something really, really good and potentially great for you. But we need you to keep talking to us, keep giving us feedback, and keep giving us like the grace, the patience to work on it and get settled. So um, it's a process. And really, at the end of the day, when we're done with all of this, we are learning a tremendous amount about how we learn. We are learning a tremendous amount about how we interact with each other. But when we come out on the other side of this, walking around the sidewalk, high five at each other, we will have been amazing for each other. I promise you that. Um, so I thought I'd just throw that out there while Susie moves on to the next thing. Yes, and that was a perfect segue because our next Slido is to get some more ideas that you might have as a community for social interaction. And while you're filling that out, would you be so kind as to turn your video off if you're not speaking? Um, and then uh, I still have some questions for Roger once we're done with this. So those of you that I know are putting some questions in the chat, hang tight, we'll get to those. But as you populate this Slido, we're gonna see this is a word cloud. So we're gonna see the, the larger words that come in are gonna be, um, like if you see something up here, if you, for instance, thought running club was great, you type it in again, it gets bigger. Um, so let's take a minute right now and see if you can think of any ideas. And if there's, like I said, if there's things that you feel like um, that you really like, type them in as they are on the screen and it'll make it get bigger. These are some really great ideas, folks. So it's really neat to see what folks are thinking and, and what's popping up here. This will be good information to bring back to our sites.
And is that still going? I see that it's been posted in the chat that Tim has fixed parent view. For, so for those of you that are having trouble getting into parent view or student view, those should be working now. There was a question about how PE is going to work, and that came up quite a bit. Um, Roger, you want to jump in? Yeah, I mean, um, I'm not teaching PE, so I don't want to speak for my PE teachers um, on, on the specifics of that. Um, but we did not cancel PE. I can tell you that there was a um, cancel PE. Why would you do that? One of the... Um, there's some requirements for for PE um, that have to do with like uh, the amount of the amount of minutes that students um, need to be in PE during the year, and the state gave us some grace on that, saying that they didn't have to be. But for us, it's still a class that we have. It's still important, um, and we're keeping it. It's graduation requirement, and so we have PE, so it's in their schedule. So that we may didn't even realize that that was an issue, but um, we have it, and so it's going to be on our PE teachers to come up with creative ways to. Um, uh, to make that happen. And, and when you start talking about, um, I saw, you know, some of the ideas there, like running club, bike riding and all that. Um, I know I was talking to one teacher at Mac yesterday who was, you know, this isn't, I'm saying this to you as an idea, not that we're going to start doing this, but why couldn't he be up in the stands and have kids distanced doing things on the track, for instance? I mean, you start thinking about how can you make this happen? And so I know our PE teachers of, of anyone are going to be trying to find ways to get kids out when they can safely, um, we have the permission to have them out running around. Um, but as far as if you're asking, do they get credit? Yes, they'll get credit for PE. Um, and our teachers will be working with them on, um, on what that'll look like. I don't know if that answered the question. Does the person want to ask for more specifics on that? Yeah, she popped in. It looks like, um, do students get PE credit for shortened sports seasons as they usually get credit? We're going to, I'll tell you what, I don't have the specific answer to that. I'll just say the answer is, I want to say the answer is yes, unless I run into some reason why it can't be. So, yeah, I mean, let me, um, as a matter of fact, I'll write, the, Tammy, write that down somewhere because that's something I need to like. We need to flesh that one out soon and communicate that to families to let them know. So we'll, we'll make sure that we have a decision on that um, and we'll communicate that out. It's a good question. Okay, I think we have most of the questions. I've been just kind of going back through the chat. Uh, it's definitely possible I missed a few of them that were more specific. There's one on tutoring I saw come in. Um, if you are needing a tutor for your child, please call your school site. Um, your admin or academic counselors can hook you up with tutors. And our last slide here, this is great, folks. I'm super excited about this word cloud that you uh, developed here. Let's check it out. Moving on to our last slide for Roger. Um for roger in that last slide oh the oh yeah we and i guess i sort of mentioned this earlier um this is a team effort you're all part of our team um we're going to be reviewing your feedback from today as we get ready for uh you know next week even um susie's going to be leading our our um, effort to get our plan together again processing feedback from today every school board meeting we're talking about this we're using that as sort of a time um to uh you know to be um coming back for the conversation in a formal public manner. And so we'll be evaluating throughout the time that we're in this situation. Um, so your principals um, have really been fabulous and your administrative teams at your sites. And you'll see the information on that slide of how to get email wise to get a hold of Mr. Collard, Mr. Manji, Mr. Perry, uh, Ms. Lankala, and Mr. Larson. And so keep, keep rolling with them too, um, because they're, they're gonna have more specific information for you based on their site. Suze, you got anything else you want to try and? Um, nope, it looks like. Um, so the question, the last question for you here, Roger, is are we planning to stay in distance learning through the first two marking periods or and reevaluating before then? What's the plan there? It'll at least be the first marking period. And at our September 8th meeting, we'll, we'll give a more formal time frame as far as when that will be. Um, Dustin, there's a 
question about swim. What about swim is the question. You know what, it's, that's a good question. Swim is gonna be offered the same time as wrestling. We will be, um, we're gonna be following the state model as far as scheduling for swimming, but swimming is one of the sports that will be offered. And here's one, can the students who are less tech savvy have a trial run on using each platform and learning the ways to upload things and hopefully access the IT staff on a regular basis? I don't understand the question as far as what the three platforms are, um, but I do know that I'm sure Tim will pop on here is I do know that we're going to be working with it's as far as the first week of school working with our students in mean, those first couple of days about how to um, to use um, our technology. So, Tim, if you want to pop in on that or anybody else. Um, yeah, I can comment on it. Um, yeah, and, and just like Roger said, we we do have a pretty pretty good plan for educating the kids, and of course they're going to have a a chance to do some um, small assignments to kind of get used to the platforms. And as far as being able to contact us, the IT support, uh, there we have a ticket system that's open to everybody. We work directly with students. We will be having office hours as well, so a chance for for them to just kind of pop into a Zoom meeting with us, ask questions, um, and so we're going to make ourselves available as much as we possibly can i, I have a team of about two and a half uh, because we have a part-time employee so um we'll we'll do our best to to address the issues and there there are resources that are available and will be talked about at the beginning of school and also i i know um that this when a teacher is I, part of it is the, is that as we're moving into this there'll be the technology part of it is while you're teaching a, a concept or a lesson about the curriculum in your class, you're also teaching how to use the, the tools too. So that's, it's, you know, it's gonna come. We completely recognize there's a need for that and appreciate the, the um, a lot of the questions about um, mentoring our students and teaching them how to use this stuff. Excellent. It looks like that's the last of our questions there, Roger. So- um... Um, Actually, one thing I, we may, what we might end up doing too is do some sort of a, it probably would be a good idea to do a frequently asked question from this. Um, and so on our website where we have all of our information, um, we'll probably also put, we'll take a look at, at some of the, the, of the major questions here and try and do like a fact so that if someone who has not um, been in any of these meetings just went there and stumbled upon it, they could see it, so. Other than that, Susie, I turn it over to you to close. You have been the woman, and I thank you very much for um, putting this together for us tonight. You're welcome. Folks, I appreciate your time this evening. This has definitely given us a lot of feedback um, for us to write our plan, and there will be more information coming out to you from your school sites as well as the district. So please make sure that your email is up to date at the school sites. If you have not been getting emails from um, from the district and the schools regularly in the last week, I would say that your email is not correct in our system and please call the school to get that correct. Um, any further questions, you can email your principals or Mr. McDonald and thanks again for your time. Let's um, start a school year to remember. Have a good night, everybody. Yep. Thanks, everybody.